Ah, uh, Christmas. Christmas is coming! Oh my god, it's almost here. Maybe you're running out of time, and maybe you're regretting inviting everyone over for dinner. Listen, I got a trick for you uh, to get all the fiddly little jobs called cutting your vegetables out of the way. I mean, the turkey is always the big deal, but you know what? The thing that takes the most time is all of the little other things. So I'm gonna show you a great trick. It's what we as chefs like to call mise en place. Uh, basically, how to get your shit together. Like key to success when it comes to making a big meal is planning. And it's as simple as sitting down a week before, thinking about all the things you're gonna have to do and starting to do them a few days before. I even like to take a bit of time and build myself a timeline. So if I know I'm serving Christmas dinner on the 25th, I have probably back to the 22nd is when I'm gonna start doing some stuff. I'm gonna make sure that I've got anything that's frozen pulled out to start defrosting in the fridge. Uh, I'll make sure I've got the majority of the groceries done and, and I'll make sure that I've got all the dishes and stuff that I'm gonna use pulled out of storage. Sometimes you have fancy Christmas things you use. One thing that we think is also a, a smart thing to do, even like a month before or as soon as you can, is go and get your knife sharpened. Uh, Christmas is the same day every year, and if you can get it done uh, before the 23rd of December, uh, that is gonna really increase your chances of us being able to sharpen your knife for you. We're gonna do these vegetables one by one. I'm going to clean them, peel them, chop them, whatever the case is. I've got a pot boiling salty water. You wanna put salt in the water for sure because especially with some of these green vegetables, if you don't, they'll actually sort of toughen up. So the salt's gonna to help to keep them nice and tender. And just as they're cooked, just, just, just as they're cooked and the crunch comes out of them, I'm going to scoop them out with this handy dandy little tool called a spider. I'm gonna scoop them out of the boiling water and I'm gonna drop them into a bucket of cold water. That's gonna stop the cooking process. And then once they've cooled off, I'm gonna take them out of the water and I'm gonna put them in a big mixing bowl and I'm gonna mix everything together in that same bowl. All right, let's get cooking. All right, I'm gonna use my very cool Suzuki Nakiri. It's pretty fun. It's sort of like a Yusuba single bevel, but, uh, but not. I like this knife when I cut with it, all the food falls away from the side of the blade and it actually makes it really fast. Just tuning it up a little bit here on my honing rod. All right, let's talk about the setup. I have all the stuff I'm going to cut and it's on my left hand side. I am right handed, so as I cut, all the food that's done being cut is gonna be on my right hand side. So I put my container, that I'm gonna put the done stuff into on my right hand side because I'm gonna have some workflow that goes that way and it's just gonna make sense. I'm not gonna be crossing over as much and I won't develop a massive mess. It's gonna be easier to clean up as I go. Something you might not know, but it's Cooking and cleaning is not cooking then cleaning. If you can keep cleaning as you're cooking, life is a lot easier. Now, I also have another bowl here. That's just gonna be for the compost. So I'm gonna start, I got a bunch of green beans. I grab them, I flip them around so all the stem ends are in one end. I don't cut the nice little tip off the end because if you do, then you might as well just use a bag of frozen beans. And I mean, if you want, just use a bag of frozen beans. So I grab a bundle that's about the amount I can sort of handle. Done. Repeat the process. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of sea salt in the water. This is about five liters of water. I'm probably gonna put that much salt in there. The reason we want salt in the water, A, for flavor, B, tenderness. Don't forget the salt in the water. Next tip, use the right knife for the job. There's a little 135 petty. This is a Brussels sprout. I'm just cutting the little dirty end off. That's it. Sometimes the outer leaves are a little bit manky, so you just, can pull them off after you've cut the bottom off. That's it. You can score the bottom of them and it supposedly makes them cook faster. These guys are pretty small and uh, I don't think it's really gonna be necessary so I'm not gonna spend extra time. I don't need to, because I'm trying to do this the fast way. Just like your turkey, uh, a, lot of, a lot of fuss goes into turkeys and one of the things that you can do is um, put salt on it and put it in the oven. You don't actually need to stuff a turkey. Chris Lord did a whole video about that one time. Rub it with salt, put it in a roasting pan, put it in the oven, that's it. You can get away with doing just that. Be just that simple. Something that's really important to know about cooking a turkey is 
the timing of it isn't nearly as important as resting it. What I mean by that is, if you slightly overcook it, that's not a problem. The problem is, if you take it out of the oven and you've had it cooking for three or four hours and you start cutting it 15 minutes out of, after the oven, that's terrible. You need to let the meat rest. The golden rule is, if you've cooked something for four hours, you should let it rest almost two hours, 50% of the amount of cook time. I find with something as big as a turkey, not as long as that, but at least if I've cooked a turkey for, an, uh, for four hours, I will rest it for at least an hour. I take it, I put it on the cutting board, I cover it in tin foil and just let it cool out. That way all those juices reabsorb back into the muscle and then when I carve it, it doesn't run juice all over the cutting board. I really like to invest in reasonable quality containers. These are actually full on restaurant issue. I go to a restaurant supply store, I buy them. They have lids you can get to put on them. They stack really nicely. They're pretty heat resistant. You can freeze them. They're just really durable, strong containers that stack in top of one another. They work really well um, and they're, they're really gonna last a long time. I just like using them. I'm so comfortable using them, but I find they really help to optimize your space when you're cooking. If you don't have stuff like this at home, even just using like one liter yogurt container, something that's consistent really helps you to be able to stack things nicely and organize it. If you have piles of stuff in mixing bowls everywhere, it's just gonna really spread out. That's not a really good use of space. Get yourself a good peeler, get a sharp one. These Kuhn Raikon ones are awesome. They just peel nice thin strips of stuff off and, and it just they just work really well, right? Having a even something that's like a peeler that's dull, that's annoying, just makes cooking suck, so get a good one. Okay, so uh, we've dumped the green beans in. We've put them all in. We're only cooking the green beans separately. And then we're gonna cook the Brussels sprouts separately. We're gonna do them each one at a time. That's because they're gonna cook a little differently, each one of them. So I don't wanna overcook the green beans while I'm waiting for the Brussels sprouts to finish. So I'm starting a little bit of a rotation. So I've got some cooking. I've got some Brussels sprouts that are ready to go. I'm gonna be cutting the carrots next. And by the time I'm finished cutting the carrots, I'm gonna be pulling the green beans out. So I'm overlapping some of the jobs. So it's gonna kind of combine the time. So I won't be uh, doing this forever. All right, now I'm gonna cut these carrots. I'm gonna cut the carrots and the parsnips the same way. I'm gonna do the, the fun roll cut where you cut a 45 degree angle and then roll your carrot one quarter of a turn. And then you end up with these sort of cool looking shapes. I like them because they're relatively even, they cook nicely and uh, they look good, they look nice. And when you mix them in with a couple of other things like we'll dice the rutabaga and the sweet potato, we've got the semi-circular uh, Brussels sprouts, the long skinny bits of the green beans, when they all mix together, they're gonna look nice. Okay, so I've pulled one green bean out. I'm gonna try and snap it. Oh yeah, you know what? I think that's cooked. It's nice, even color all the way through. It doesn't look raw in the middle. It's still crunchy, but that's perfect. When I reheat it, it'll soften it. But it's cooked all the way through. You can put ice in your water. Don't put a ton of ice in the water because then what happens is you scoop out ice and the green beans, and now you gotta pick ice cubes out. Why? Why cold water? Let me tell you, because it's cold. And if you wanna stop the cooking process, you need to put it in something cold like cold water. Now, there are some things that you might not wanna put in water. Say you're gonna do something like potatoes. You could actually lay them out in a thin layer on a baking sheet and put them in the fridge and cool them down that way. Now, Brussels sprouts are going in. The reason I'm focusing here on the vegetables today is because I really find that you're gonna do a number of different vegetables and they really do take a fair bit of time. It, it, it really is nice to get them done in advance and they work out really well. It, trying to cook a turkey in advance doesn't. Cooking mashed potatoes, that's not so good. Some like scalloped potatoes, you wanna do that? For sure you could do that, it's like a lasagna. You get them all in the dish, you cook them three days before Christmas and, uh, and just cool them down. It, it does take a while to get them heated back up, but hey, all you gotta do is put it in an oven, you get to spend the day with your family. Once I've got all of these things blanched and mixed together, I'm gonna reheat them together in the oven. Now, I could feasibly mix them all together and put them in a big baking dish and put all of that in the fridge, 
but that dish is gonna hold a lot of that cold temperature. So what I find helps is instead of putting a cold dish with the cold vegetables in the oven, is I'll keep these blanched prepped vegetables in a, another container and then I'll put them into a warm container. E even if it's a, a dish you can preheat, that'll make it easier because what happens is if you put a cold ceramic dish in the oven, it's going to drop the temperature of the oven. Now, if you've got other stuff going on in there, like for example, your turkey, that's really gonna slow down the process as the temperature drops and then has to come back up. So the less you can affect that temperature of the oven, the better the cooking is gonna go for everything else that's in there. Schlebang. This is a rutabaga and I love rutabagas. They have such beautiful color, they're so delicious and they're cheap. This is by far the cheapest of the vegetables that I bought today and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're making a bunch of food for a lot of people, food's expensive. If food stresses you out, like the price of it's getting really up there, if it's stressing you out, look for some cheaper things. Try and find some stuff that's on sale. You don't have to always use the same things and getting something like rutabagas and onions and stuff that's less expensive, you can use to bulk out the dish, counteract the expensive price of something like green beans maybe, or you know, asparagus that might be really fancy. Put less of that stuff in, put in more of these guys. This is a fun cutting technique. You can peel this with a peeler if you'd like. I don't find that it gets quite enough off. Um, I like to peel it with my knife instead. Uh, it's a fun technique if you're learning to, to make some better knife skills where you kind of follow the curve of the, the, the rutabaga with the knife by turning the knife around. If you'll notice, I start at the tip and I slide the knife forwards. And as I slide it forwards, I flip it over. This is a great technique for cutting root vegetables like this. Also works great on big fruits like cantaloupes and watermelons and uh, oranges too. All right, I'm just gonna dice this rutabaga. So I've just cut it into some slices and cut it into a couple of sticks. Cut the sticks into dices. There we go, that's it, that's all. Depending on the size of your knife and your comfort level of cutting stuff, change the quantity of stuff that you're cutting at a time. If you do, you'll be able to get more even cuts. The more even cuts will cook more evenly and frankly, they're just gonna look nicer. We can split the deck here that's gonna be a little bit more manageable for me and the size of the knife I've got here. And try and cut them a little smaller instead of cutting big massive pieces because uh, it just, it'll come together really nicely and you can sometimes eat a couple of bits together at a time. Having a little bit of a rutabaga next to a carrot, next to a Brussels sprout is nice. Having a huge lump of rutabaga, eh, it's not so good. Carrots come out. I peeled my big sweet potato. I'm sorry if that upsets you, but I'm going to cut it into nice little dice. Uh, what's the best way to do that? I'm gonna cut a piece off the side. Now I'm gonna have a flat spot. When you got something big and round, roly poly, like a big Santa Claus vegetable, cut a flat spot off the side of it. And then when you cut it, it's not gonna roll around. Also, I should be using a bigger knife. But that's what happens. Sometimes you just make it work. I'm gonna try and dice them about the same size as the rutabaga, so then they'll have nice complementing shapes and colors. Woo, no wait, I'm cutting, the, I'm cutting the sweet potatoes into diamonds. So I've cut them straight. To cut things into the diamond, you just cut it straight, and then you cut your second cut to make the dice on 45 degree angle. All right, I'm gonna trim the leek. The top part can be really dirty and sometimes not all that tasty. When you're buying a leek, you wanna buy a bigger white part than the green part. Sometimes you find a leek and it's a tiny little white part and a big green part. Those suck, don't get those. Now, the way a leek grows, they can get quite dirty. So I'm gonna cut it in half right down the middle. And you can see some dirty layers in the middle here. So I'm just gonna to go to the sink and rinse that dirt out. All right, I like these leeks. I'm not gonna blanch them in the water. I'm actually just gonna saute them along with the onion. We'll do that separately in a frying pan. We'll cool them down, but not in the water, of course. Uh, we want all those flavors from the frying pan to stick around. So I'll put them on a baking sheet and in the fridge. Again, we're cutting them a little bigger, so we have kind of bite-sized pieces, but not so small they disappear. 
not so big that you're forcing someone to eat a big chunk of leek. After a little while, your cutting board's gonna have some stuff on it, so, you know, give it a wipe. You wipe your knife down, keep it clean, keep it clean. Onions are great, they add such a nice base of flavor to things. We're gonna saute them along with the leeks nice and slow so we get some caramelization. That'll add a little bit of sweetness to go along with our other vegetables. And, uh, you know, we're gonna just peel that off. Same thing, I'm gonna cut them sort of a medium-sized dice here. You can save the little end bits if you want, if you're gonna make a stock. But if not, just try and put as much as you can in your food. Now while we're finishing up some of the cooking here, I got a couple other quick tips for you. Probably the week before Christmas, like maybe the day that you write your list, go through your fridge, find all the leftovers you've got that you're not gonna eat and get rid of them. Feed them to people. Uh, if you've got little, can, you know, make some space in your fridge, clear it out. Break, if you've got something in a big container and you can save some space by putting it into a smaller container, do that. Clean it up and, and that'll just give you more room to work with and you won't lose things. Also, if you want to uh, really stay on top of your game here, especially if you're gonna be really busy, when you're prepping your food, get a roll of painter's tape and a Sharpie and write on the container what's in there. Green beans, vegetables, potatoes, whiskey, whatever. That way, when you go to look in your fridge, you might be surprised how much nicer it is to find stuff when you can look and you can clearly see the label right in the front. Not only are you cleaning up space for your prep, you're gonna clear up some space for your leftovers. And you might even find a few things in here that you can incorporate into your holiday cooking. Maybe the cranberry sauce from Thanksgiving is still in there and you can do, use that a second time. So much sugar in that, it's like jam, it's not gonna go bad. What else we got in here? Time to saute some leeks and some onions in my cast iron pan, a little bit of oil. We're gonna let them sit in here for a while, kind of medium, medium low heat because I want to get some caramelization happening on these onions, so it's going to take a little while. I'm just going to kind of cook out in the background here. You can uh, do other stuff in the meantime. Uh, these onions and leeks are really going to add a nice flavor, really bring all of this stuff together. It's really going to help bring that uh, vegetable dish up to another level. I used yellow onions. You can use white onions, red onions, shallots, whatever. Add some garlic. I use some olive oil to saute them, saute them in butter, whatever you like. If you want, now would be a good time if you wanted to add possibly dried herbs. Uh, maybe you've got something like a poultry stuffing mix, that would work well. Or sage or fresh thyme, dried thyme, uh, whatever you want. World's your oyster. So I've got a bowl of pre-cooked vegetables. It takes about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, depending what you've got going on. And it can stay in the fridge for a couple of days. It'll be fine. When I go to serve it, I'm gonna take it out um, and put it in a roasting dish. If you add garlic butter with some fresh herbs like parsley or sage or something, e even nicer. A uh, little lemon zest if you wanna spark it up a little bit, but that's it. And instead of spending that hour or 45 minutes on the day, it's already done. It's gonna take you five minutes. Whack it in the oven. That's it, you're good to go. Listen, we love tips, we love tricks. We don't have them all. If you got something we missed, pop in the comments below. There's also a bunch of other turkey Christmas related videos we've done like carving, roasting, all that kind of stuff. Check out our channel, a bunch of other videos there for you too. Happy holidays.